We are, we are glad that you're here. A few things, I'm Scott, I'm the pastor. A few things we want to tell you about uh, before we get started with the worship gathering. Uh, so a group in the church, uh, Jenny Polly, her PEO group, and some other folks have uh, done these pillowcases. They're brightly colored, wonderful pillowcases. There are 300 of them over there underneath the Christmas tree, uh, along with 300 pillows. That was just too many <laughs> to put 300 pillows over by the tree. Uh, but th- these are all going to go to the homeless in, in the Daytona Beach area uh, through Halifax Urban Ministries. Um, and so uh, you just think about sometimes you see those folks having sleeping on the side of the road or sleeping on a park bench or just sleeping on a mat somewhere in a community center that allows them to sleep. Uh, now they'll have a pillow. Uh, to rest their heads on on that. And so uh, they made them, uh, some of the folks in the church and the PEO group did it. And so we want to thank them for that gift and we want to pray for this uh, as a way to bless uh, the folks uh, that are sleeping on them. So let's pray. God, we do give you thanks for folks who are creative and have skills and abilities uh, to make things. Uh, And these gifts are the pillowcases and the pillows. Uh, May you bless them. May those who sleep on them uh, know that they are loved and they are cared for. May they know that they matter. In your name we pray, amen. On that note, a couple of things uh, just to make you aware of uh, things you don't hear happening in the life of our church. Uh, Last week, or uh, yeah, it was last week, or maybe it was two weeks ago. Last week, uh, Dr. Sandra Avant, she's a dentist in in town, organized a dentist day apart. Uh, This was her idea. She's a member of our church, active in our church. Uh, She sometimes sings at the 9 o'clock service. Um, She set up seven dentists around the the community uh, to give free dental care. Uh, to homeless from Halifax Urban Ministry, Hope Place, uh, and Community United Methodist in Daytona. While I was a bus driver, I kind of drove on them to their different appointments. They did over, I think, 45 uh, men and women and children uh, receive you know, cleanings or fillings or extractions or um, crowns. About $37,000 worth of free dental care uh, was given to, uh, for that, which is really cool. <laughs> And then another connection our church is doing, uh, this actually, my, my wife had this connection, Chris. We had some friends of ours, the Bertellis, who owned the Lotto Company, uh, Lotto, not the, not the lottery, Lotto. Uh, it's, a, it's a sportswear company. They're transitioning back to Italy, um, and they had a warehouse and said, hey, can you all do anything with these clothes? And so uh, my wife fallen told me that I would go up there and help. Um, and, and when we got up there, we realized it wasn't just a few clothes. It was a massive amount. Um, and so we call some church folks, we, uh, Halifax Urban Ministry again, Hope Place, um, Osceola Elementary, Atlantic High School, and then seven other schools in the area received shorts, athletic wear, but socks, jackets, uh, things for cold weather, uh, $40,000 worth of free merchandise uh, was given away, uh, which is some really... That's just some really cool stuff through connections in the community that folks have saying, hey, I'd like to help in some way. Uh, you never know how somebody can say, hey, I have this idea to help in some way, and it expands into an incredible uh, a way. So dental care, clothing, and all that stuff, and pillowcases and pillows. So we're grateful for all of y'all at First United who helped create a place and a space uh, to share God's love in this community. So thanks for doing that. On that note, we're excited today. We have some folks who are going to join the church, so if y'all want to come on down, uh, with Terry and, and Jim. Terry's our, our next step director, and Jim leads the class. And so I told them we'd love for them to introduce themselves, tell us their name, their hometown, wherever their hometown, they feel like their hometown is, and one interesting fact. All right, hold on, Mary. They want to, no, they want to hear you. So we are grateful for these folks who are joining the church. We had some folks join a couple weeks ago as, as well. Uh, but in joining the church, we have some questions they, and they answer in front of y'all uh, so you can acknowledge them. And you know that uh, you remember your baptism and give thanks. And you acknowledge Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And are you sorry for your sins? going to live a life worthy of the gospel. And right, now think about this as you see all these fine folks. 
Will you do all in your power to faithfully participate in the ministries of this church by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? You see what I see every week, right? They're wanting to join with y'all. They're wanting to partner with y'all. They've already been part of us. They've already begun to use their gifts and graces here to bless us and let God work in them and through them. But as members of First United, will you accept them into your group? Will you love them and care for them and join with them in helping to create a place and a space uh, for people to connect with God and each other here in Ormond Beach? If so, let me hear you say yes. Let's pray. God, we give you thanks for these folks who have made this commitment uh, and for the gifts and for the graces they bring to us and for the blessings they already have shared. Uh, may your love and your grace flow through all of us and continue to impact us to make a difference in this world. In your name we pray. Amen. Don't forget uh, to fill out that connection folder. It's a great way to connect with us um, and us to connect with you. Uh, we'd love for you to do that and take an opportunity to do that. We have uh, been doing a series for, for the season of Christmas. We're looking at some of the great Christmas uh, movies to help us understand the story, kind of look at it through their lens. Um, and we only have four weeks, actually five weeks if you count Christmas Eve. So there's five movies. And so y'all have already sent me a list of movies I need to do next year. So thank you. Um, because I, you're right, we, we're, we're not doing Miracle on 34th Street, uh, we're not doing Polar Express, uh, we're, what, what else aren't we doing? We're not doing Die Hard, um, we're not doing, uh, there's just several of them that, that we're not doing. Uh, so I said, we got to do Charlie Brown Christmas. I'm like, I did, four years ago, we did a whole series every day on Charlie Brown Christmas. Um, so I, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you there are a lot of them we're not doing, but today's is the best. Uh, it's a toss-up for me. I mean, Wonderful Life is the one that touches my heart more. But uh, if I have to choose between one or two Christmas movies, there's always Christmas Vacation and then A Christmas Story. Uh, they're the two that I quote the most when it comes to Christmas time. And, but today we're doing uh, the, the Christmas Story. It's got some of the best quotable lines in there. Even Happy's wearing the shirt today. It says, I triple dog dare you. Uh, that's just, I've used that line a lot in my life, and it's just a great story. I mean, they're all kind of little fun little Christmas moments. I mean, how many of you growing up had a mama that put you in clothes that were so tight that as soon as you got them on, you couldn't get your arms down? Or when you were raising your kids and you got them dressed to go outside, what did they have to do? They got to go to the bathroom. I mean, they just have little moments like that throughout the whole thing, and I, I was so grateful for TBS because they showed it uh, Friday night in case you wanted to see it. It was on uh, Friday night. It actually, though, what's made the story famous is since 1997, TBS and TNT have shown it uh, for 24 hours straight starting Christmas Eve at 8 p.m. all the way through Christmas Day at 8 uh, p.m. It came out in 1983, um, and it says on here, it was a tribute to the original traditional 100% red-blooded, two-fisted, all-American Christmas uh, doing this. But if you know the story, what well, the story centers around is a little kid named Ralphie, and what does Ralphie want? Okay, let's people, I'm sorry. What he wanted was a Red Rider, 200 shot, range model air rifle with a compass in the stock and a thing that tells time, which we later learned is a sundial. I mean, this, this kid, he was obsessing over the Red Rider BB gun. He had to have it. And it starts off with he takes an ad, he makes an ad for it, and slips it into his mom's favorite magazine. You know, back when people actually used to get magazines. But back, slips it into his mom's favorite magazine. When his mom sees it, she opens it up, and he goes, what do you want for Christmas? And he's like, I want a Red Rider. I need a 200 shot. You know, but and what does mom say? You'll shoot your eye out. So he, but he comes up with this great plan and he goes to his teacher. His teacher wants him to write a theme. And I still don't know what a theme is. I think it's an essay. Um, but he wants to write a theme and he comes up with this idea. He's going to write the greatest theme in history. And he has this daydream moment where he writes such a phenomenal theme that the whole class picks him up and carries him around on his shoulders like he's one of, you know, majors, you know, and, ah! and he turns it in. And you remember he turns it in and just smiles at the teacher and, she gives it back to him with a D plus. And it says, on, oh, it was a C plus. It was a C plus. But what does it say underneath it? You'll shoot your eye out. But undaunted and undeterred, he realized, all I have to do is appeal to the big guy. And if I can just get to Santa, all will be well. And he gets to Santa, and here's what happens. Come on, kid. Ho, ho, ho. Come on. Come 
on up, come on up there. Ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho, ho. Then what's your name, little boy? Hey, kid. Hurry up, the store's closing. Come on. Listen, little boy, we've got a lot of people waiting here, so get going. What do you want for Christmas, little boy? <sighs> My mind had gone blank. Frantically, I tried to remember what it was I wanted. I was blowing it, blowing it. Come on, kid. How about a nice uh, football? 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 What's a football? <laughs> With unconscious will, my voice squeaked out. Football. Okay, get him out of here. A football? Oh, no. Okay, what was I doing? Wake up, is. stupid. Wake up. No. <laughs> You'll shoot your eye out, kid. Merry Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. No! Ho, ho. <laughs> Even Santa knows that if he gets that gun, he's going to shoot his eye out, right? And it, it's easy to point at Ralphie and go, dude, you shouldn't be that obsessed with that. Red Ryder BB gun. It's easy to do that, but but if but it is kind of the season to be obsessed, isn't it? Because we gotta have. I, I just gotta have this. If I get this, life's gonna be. Oh, right. I mean, I, 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 did you, did y'all ever have something you obsessed over as a kid that you wanted? What was it? What? Red shoes. Red shoes, and that was just a child. That was just a childhood thing? <laughs> really? <laughs> really just a childhood thing? Whatever. I, 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 whatever. Chris reminded me when I was preaching Thursday night, I'll never forget when Caleb was six or seven, my son, we had to have Volcano Blowout. It was the toy. It was a Hot Wheels thing with a volcano, and it shot the things out and all this. And, and Santa delivered it at about 12.30 a.m. on Christmas Eve. Uh, right about the time his helper, me, got home from the Christmas Eve services. And I got to put that sucker together. Do you know how hard it is to put together volcano blowout and get it all working right with, you know, without waking everybody up in the family? And Caleb gets up and plays with it for a good 20 minutes and then realizes it's just a lot more fun to do his own thing. Right? Isn't, that, isn't that the way it works, though? We obsess over stuff. We got to have it. We got to have it. Got Because if we just get this, and, and, and unfortunately, we, we can pick on Ralphie as a kid, but as adults, we're still ate up with it. We have this belief, this idea that if we can just get the right, the right job, the right house, the right car, the right spouse, the right, if we, if we just get something, just, I just need this. If I can just get this, life will be that much better. We all, we all kind of have that, this desire within us that, that it's not good now, but if I can just get, oh, as though this thing or this place or whatever. Well, a friend of mine, a pastor of mine over in, uh, Charlie Reeve, a friend of mine over in, uh, when well, he's now moved to Atlanta, he, he was talking about this one time. He goes, we all have destination addiction. And destination addiction is the preoccupation, the obsession, really, that happiness is found in the next thing. The next, the next thing, the next place, the next job, the next toy, the next partner, the neck, that, 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 just, if I can just get, oh, and we obsess over that, right? And think about how much you think about it, plan for it, pray for it. God, if you will just give me this, my life will be complete, whole, and wonderful. And until we give up the idea that happiness is somewhere else, happiness will never be where we are. Until you give up the idea that happiness is somewhere else, you'll never have happiness where you are. Uh, Jesus actually talks about this in a story in the Gospel of Luke. 
Uh, he talks about, he, and he, I just want to read the last little part of it for you in Luke chapter 12, verse 15. It says, And Jesus said to them, Watch out. Be on guard against all kinds of greed. Now, I know right now, as soon as I say the word greed, y'all are like, Oh, you're just talking about money stuff. Mm mm. I'm not talking about just about money stuff. I'm talking about always thinking that next thing is going to be better. That if you can just get this, my life will be complete. If I can just have her, if I can just get that car, if I can just get whatever it is, this job, this, if I can just get it, all right, watch out. Be on guard against all kinds of greed because life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. You might want to remember that last part because you live in a culture that tells you the exact opposite. Jesus says, life does not consist in the abundance of possessions, but our culture says it sure does. What you have, what you wear, what you own, where you live, what you drive, where you work, who you hang out with, where you go to church, that's what matters. That defines who you are. And we all got to have the right, you know, I got to have this, I got to have this, I got to have this. We all want it to line up. Right? And think about how much time, energy, and effort we put into pursuing that next thing. And what's interesting is we all know this. Every one of us knows this deep within our hearts. If we get the next thing, it ain't going to be good enough. Like that volca- volcano blowout, it's going to... I, I can tell you, uh, when I was in college, I, I had to have a Mustang. Had to have a Mustang. Oh, it was so pretty. It was five speed, and it was fast, and I had the tickets to prove it. <laughs> I was, oh, thing got old and decrepit. You know, good five, six years old. Got to get the new, right? There's always going to be something. There's, there's always, uh, I always got to have this. It's going to make, if I can just get this, it'll be better. If I just, and think about how much energy you put into pursuing it. As though there's some type of something within us that we can fill this void within us and it will be this, this thing, this person, this place, this, this experience, this whatever will fill this emptiness when, when actually God's the only one that can fill that emptiness. That's what we believe. We pursue all this stuff and it, it made me, and, and actually this time of year where we talk about peace and love and joy and hope, it, it really robs us of that. Because the appetizers prey on the ability of, that, of us to tell us that we need this next thing. Have you seen those commercials about the car? I'm going to let you know, if I buy my wife a car and I haven't told her, she is not running with joy out into the parking lot. <laughs> there are going to be other issues in our house we are dealing with in, in that moment, uh, kind of stuff. And it's like, and it, and it's like we, we kind of think, oh, this is going to be, oh. And I'm, I, just within me, I've been wrestling with I spent all this time pursuing this stuff. How much time do I spend pursuing God? And what would happen if I pursued God as much as I pursued the right Christmas present? Or what would happen if I pursued God as much as I, a new job or a new whatever? Now, don't hear me. I'm not looking for a new job. I just realized as soon as I said that, somebody went, what? But I think, it, if I pursued God the way I pursued the stuff I think will make my life better, would I find joy and peace and happiness in that? Would I find love there? Be- because all this other way we do it is, you know, thinking that this Red Rider carbine action BB gun or whatever it is for you, and that's like drinking seawater. It'll quench your thirst, but then you're going to be really, really thirsty. And eventually it'll kill you. There's always that next thing. Of course, Ralphie's not the only one who obsesses over something in the story, is he? Who's the other guy that obsesses over something? The dad. What does the dad obsess over? Folks, it is a major award. I know you think it's a leg lamp. But when he gets it, he he gets this lamp. It's, It's pretty much a pornographic leg. Um, and the silk stocking thing, and he wins, but it's a major award. I love it when it comes in the movie. It comes in this huge crate, and he's like, it's Italian. It says fragile on it, because <laughs> fragile, <laughs> right? And he opens it up, and it is, I'm seriously, you can buy one on Amazon for 180 bucks at 40 inches high. 
I decided that would not go well in my house. Um, right? Because, I mean, it's this leg, and it's got the silk stocking or the, the fishnet stocking, and then the... Like, and he takes it, if you know the movie, he takes it and he puts it right in the window where everybody, and he's like, oh, right? And Ralphie's kind of staring at it like, <laughs> and all the neighbors come over. And he's like, it's a major award. He obsesses over this thing, and his wife is less than thrilled. And then Ralphie tells us that shortly thereafter, the battle of the lamp begins. And here's what happens in that. Red cabbage. Hmm, that's for tomorrow night. You love red cabbage, Ralphie. You will be his son. Okay. Smelly walk buster. Grub dump for at and house to go pfeiffer. Hey, you bladder was not grab that. What happened next was a family controversy for years. You shut and shift to pass the back. You snort, hunger, play monger, snack a shell cocker. What was that? What happened? What happened? What broke? I don't know what happened. I was watering my plant and I broke your lamp. Did you, did you touch that? You were always jealous of this lamp. Jealous of a plastic lamp? Jealous. Lion? Jealous because I won. Ridiculous. Jealous. Jealous of what? That is the ugliest lamp I have ever seen in my entire life. Now it was out. Get the glue. We're out of glue. You use up all the glue on purpose. The old man stood quivering with fury, stammering as he tried to come up with a real crusher. All he got out was... Not a finger! With as much dignity as he could muster, the old man gathered up the sad remains of his shattered major award. Later that night, alone in the backyard, he buried it next to the garage. Now, I could never be sure, but I thought that I heard the sound of taps being played. Gently. It... <laughs> it's funny. But how many of us know a family where they got their priorities out rough and they obsessed over a little squabble and it just kept going and going and going and now sisters don't speak to each other in years. Or in a co-workers, we get jealous of a co-worker's promotion or something a co-worker did and we obsess over it and we just linger on it and we stay with it and now... I thought this, I didn't realize this until uh, I was preaching Thursday night at the service. Uh, they did a brilliant job on the poster. Because the two legs are the same. His wife's and their major award. Which one did he spend the most time with? Which one did he obsess over? There's great connection going on there. Because can't we all point to something where 
within a family, within a relationship. We got our priorities out of whack and we obsessed over the wrong thing. Jesus in Matthew's gospel, he says this, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. This is the line. Although I wish he'd have written it. I wish he'd have said it different. I'll talk about that in a second. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. That's what Jesus says. Where your treasure is, what you love the most, what you desire the most, what you want the most, that's where your heart is. I wish Jesus would have said, I wish it was where your heart is, that's your treasure. Because I will say, and we all do, I love family. I love God. I love that's what I love. I will tell you that. Don't we all say that? I've yet to meet anybody going, I love my work more than I love my family. Now, not one person I've ever said, hey, I'd rather spend more time working with my family. Well, they, I actually have had people tell me that, and that's when their marriages were in trouble. But isn't that how it happens? We get our priorities out of whack. We begin to obsess over the wrong thing. So what's first in your life? What is it that you pursue more than anything else? What, what is the thing that matters the most to you? What, what gets your time and energy and best resources? Job? Family? Kids? Spouse? Do you obsess over sports? Not that I know anything about that. Or the next... One of the things that Chris did that was really helpful for us as a family, that when, we, when our kids started getting a little bit old, well, no, when they were young, they were really tiny, we had to do couch time every night, which meant she and I had to sit on the couch and have a conversation just as adults, like kind of thing, like we cared about each other. Uh, and no children were allowed up uh, because this was mommy and daddy time. And, and they needed, mommy and daddy needed to see that, that mommy and daddy, uh, the kids need to see that mommy and daddy were more important. They were the number one relationship in the household. And, and I used to joke with my kids, although there was a little bit of truth in it. Uh, mommy's more important because I can make more of y'all. was the conversation I would have with them. Um, <laughs> kind of thing. And, you know, <laughs> they have some therapy they're going through. Um, <laughs> i I'll never forget that when we first started doing it, uh, the boys who never wanted to spend time with us, like, what are y'all doing? Why can't we be up there? And we pushed them down in the dog wanted to jump up on the couch, and Chris was like, can you lift dog up here? We're like pushing it up, right? Because that was the relationship that mattered the most. What, what relationship matters the most for you? What are you doing to pursue God? I mean, how many of you, just don't raise your hands, but how many of you have made a Christmas list of this is what I want? Or how many of you made a Christmas list of this is what I need to get so-and-so? And how many of you have thought about what you can do for God and made a list? I mean, why is it that we will spend so much time, energy, and effort pursuing all these things for this season? If we can be truthful in church, which we should be able to be, you realize most of the gifts you're going to give people are probably going to be returned for something better or re-gifted. <laughs> We spend all this time trying to get this. What are you doing to pursue God? Which as I was talking about this and preaching this, I realized, um, you know, it's Christmas time. It, it is the season that God is pursuing us. That's that song we sang, Emmanuel, that God is with us, that God has come to be with us, that God is here. And, and so if God's pursuing us, and I started, and this is my personality, this is my weakness, this is what I struggle with, you always need to be doing something. I can't have a day where I don't have, you've, you've got to accomplish something today, otherwise it's a waste of time. You've got to do, 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 do. And so I immediately go to it, and that, that transitions into my faith. You need to be doing these things to pursue God. Put God first. You've got to do this, you've got to do this, you've got to do this. And I realized, no, I don't. You know, I need to do more than anything else to experience God in my life. Stop. Be still. God will catch me. 
I keep pursuing all those other things, running towards all those other things, thinking I will find peace and love and joy and hope. And all the time, God's right behind me going, hello, stop, be still. I'm here. All that you need, just stop. You know, that's how Christmas story ends. I mean, it ends like all sappy, feel-good, Hallmark-type Christmas movies we watch. You know, it ends with the turkey gets eaten by the dogs. (laughs) And they have to go to the Chinese restaurant because it's the only one open. It has one of the more inappropriate scenes in movie history in the Chinese restaurant. And then they come home, and it's begun to snow. And the little brother falls asleep. And Ralphie is there sitting, and his parents are sitting there, and they're looking out. And it's a sense that everything's calm and peaceful, and all is right with the world. And all they have done in that moment is stopped. And Ralphie, in the movie, says, And I realized all was well with the world. Maybe they don't think about what you have to do and what you have to get or for Christmas. Maybe begin to wrestle with and think about it. This is what I have to do and this is what I have to get to pursue God. Today, can you just stop trying to find all those things that are going to make life wonderful for you? Just stop with your destination of addiction of just this next thing will be it. Just stop. And realize God is with you. And all is well. Because that's all you need. So you come forward for communion today, you may be wrestling with moments in the past where you let your priorities get out of whack. Good news is God forgives you for that. Just open yourself up to God and say, hey. And some of you may be coming forward going, I've messed this up. It, it's not too late to make things right. Because Jesus gives us the answer to everything in a small little verse in Matthew chapter 6. Seek first the kingdom of God. And all that other stuff will fall into place. How do you find God? Stop. Because God's already there. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for you, he took bread, gave thanks unto God, and broke the bread. Gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took a cup and gave thanks unto God. And after giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples and he said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood, the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you should drink of it in remembrance of me. And so today we come in remembrance of all that God has done for us. We come in remembrance of how God pursues us with God's love, that God comes into this world, Emmanuel, to be with us, and that we may try and fill the holes with everything else. And our real calling is just to stop and let God catch us. Let's pray. God, we just ask that you pour out your spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of the bread and the cup, and let them be for us the body and blood of Christ. And God, if we confess that every bone in our body tells us we have to do, we have to be, we have to fix, we have to solve, we have to make it right. We have to get all this to be loved. When the message is you came to us. When the hope is you are here with us. So grant us peace that we may stop and be still and know that you are God. And let you fill us with all that we need. We pray this prayer in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let me invite those who are going to help serve, if you'll come forward at this time.